If there's one generalization you can make about a man who wears a fairy tale purple Lululemon hoodie on camera, is that he knows his spice. So today we're talking about how to spice up your chords with something really, really easy. This is actually something that I've learned from the last month when I've been doing this kind of like shredding every night exercise that I'm applying to acoustic guitar, okay? So if you've been keeping track of any of the videos this month, you might see some concepts repeated, but we haven't talked about an acoustic and how you can use it with chords, all right? So we're gonna do it in the manliest key of all time, the most confident key, the key of F major, okay? So what's important here is that we just understand the intervals of the major scale, like we always get down to. I know some of you are like, oh, minute into the video, we've already gone over the hoodie, I can't make fun of him for that because he beat me to the punch. That was on purpose, just so you know. We're already talking about major scale intervals, all right? So we're gonna talk about the chords in the key of F, but I wanna talk about rather than them being major or minor, just them being the same fret on the B and the high E string, okay? So we're gonna start off by playing on this Gibson L00 guitar that was given you by Sweetwater. This video is sponsored by Sweetwater. Definitely check them out in the description. Uh, we're gonna talk about all the chords in the key of F, starting like this. It's super easy. One and one, three and three, five and five, six and six, eight and eight, 10 and 10, 12 and 11, 13 and 13, okay? So I just kind of played most of those with one finger. You can definitely feel free to use two fingers however you wanna group these together. But we're gonna talk about the chords as just little two note pieces of them. And that's how we're actually gonna end up fleshing out some of the bigger chords in this key, all right? So you may be familiar with the term double stops, right? All that means is like playing two notes at a time, all right? So when I play these two notes right here, the first fret on the B string, which is a C, and the first fret on the E string, which is an F, a C and an F, those two notes don't always combine to make an F major chord. You need an F, an A, and a C. So, you know, we have an F and a C. We got, we got the gist of it, right? But the reason that we're skipping the other note in that chord for now, we're gonna talk about it in a second, is because it just makes it super easy to just move this shape around, okay? So, real quick music theory breakdown, brought to you by Sweetwater Sound. We've got uh, seven notes in the key of F. There's just one flat, it's B. So F, G, A, B flat, C, D, and E. Each one of those notes become a chord. So the chords in the key of F, and again, you have to memorize this, it'll make more sense in a second, are F major, G minor, A minor, B flat major, C major, D minor, E diminished, back to F, okay? Now, what we're, do, what we're doing here is we're coming up with representatives of all those chords that I just played, all right? So, the first one, this is gonna be like an F major. The second one, that's like a G minor, A minor, B flat major, C major, D minor, is that like diminished one we talked about, and then back to 13 and 13, all right? So, Real quick, how we can use this to spice up existing chords without even thinking of these as chords, but knowing that chords exist in that spot means if we just have something super, super simple, like a one to a two progression in the key of F, that would be F major to G minor. The one is always gonna be major chord, the two is always gonna be minor, right? So we can have like F major. I'll even play it not even as a bar chord, right? I'll just play it like this, where it's 3A, 3D, 2G, 1B. If I hit the open string, open E string, that's fine. To G minor. However you want to play it, right? G minor is the same shape, two frets higher, but then we just have to make sure that the third fret, so it's 5, 5, 3, 3. If we're just talking about the middle strings. is that in between those chords, I'm spicing up that chord by just maybe adding some of these double stops. And because we have run through these ad nauseum, again, first fret, third fret, fifth fret, go a half step higher, sixth fret, eighth fret, tenth fret. In fact, you can stop there. Definitely keep going if you want to, to 12 and 11, and then start over at the octave. 
But if you just think of it as like, we're starting with this one little double step here, doing the same thing a step higher and a step higher, and then going one fret higher and doing the same thing. Starting there, a step higher and a step higher, a step meaning two frets. That's giving you so much room to play with in any of these chord progressions. Maybe we could just do a one, two, a three, which would be F major to A minor. Right? Traditional F to A minor. Again, I'm just, I'm forcing these into a spot, right? I think if you played every single chord progression like that, where you just hit a chord and then just did some double stop flying around in between, there's really not a lot of room for melody, right? So take it with a grain of salt. Take it from fairy tale purple. I was looking up different types of purple to try to make fun of myself with this intro joke. By the way, the amount of comments I got last time I wore this that were like, uh, way to, way to steal Andrea's wardrobe. Give, give Andrea her hoodie back was a little shocking. What's wrong with purple? I feel like there needs to be more purple in the world. But uh, there's actually a, a shade of purple called Little Princess Purple. So uh, definitely check out Sweetwater.com and see if you can find some Little Princess Purple uh, colored guitars and, and then just have at it, right? So again, that, that's just one quick example of how you can spice stuff up just by adding that. All right, now you may be like, well, these aren't really full chords. How much can they really help me as far as like maybe moving chords around? Well, that's where you just have to add one extra note. All right, so remember, this is an F and a C, and that's representing an F major chord. Whereas here, we have a G and a D. Well, that's representing a G minor chord. Now, you can think of like, all right, well, since like we said, the key of F has a B flat, that means we can't really stay in the key and play G major because there's a B in that chord, right? So the G and the D are fine. The reason that this two note double stop thing works for all the minor and major chords is because this is really a root note and it's fifth. The third of a chord is what makes a major minor, right? So if we're gonna extend this thinking one string lower to get the G string into the, into the game, right? we would end up with your middle finger being one fret higher than where that little double step is to make a major chord, a major triad. Or, in a minor chord's case, we would just bar the bottom three frets, right? So, G major would look like this. G minor would look like this. In fact, maybe you've even seen exercises that like start you off or sound like, like maybe they'd start with a, with a F. Like something like that, and then I screwed it up at the end. But it's that the, the point is, it's like okay, even though that sounds like you know maybe like a like an inverted sixths exercise, they're called different things. The point is that these are just notes that are available to you in whichever way you want to use them, right? So I don't have to play them as major, minor, minor, major, major, minor chords. I can just maybe take little pieces of them that I like, right? So for instance, maybe if I want to go to something for the A minor chord, a traditional open voice A minor chord, I can just key in in my mind's eye on that fifth fret, right? And maybe I want to take that from an A minor to an F. What I could do is I could walk this back and then if, if you want to make it sound like a certain style, you could maybe... You know, kind of work it that way. Or you hit the you hit the G string to the high E string, slide it back, then back like that. I think moving around like that, uh, you, you definitely give a lot of importance to that G string and what it's doing. I think for just like kind of just spicing up little things in between, it's really cool just to think about the the high B and E strings because so much of the time, what we will perceive as melody is found on top of the chord, specifically with a solo acoustic guitar, like a great sounding acoustic guitar, like this Gibson L00. I'll also link in the description the unboxing of this because I thought that was pretty funny just because I'm a clown. But uh, 
You know, what you hear was on top of a chord, the highest note. So even when I'm playing an A minor, and then I hit that A, that really kind of solidifies that melodic content that maybe is bringing me back home instead of just something that you'd get just going by like A. Okay, which is like an easier way to play that if you're just playing like open A, and then maybe this cool G minor seven chord voicing that can take the place of a more difficult to play G minor chord to F. Like here's the difference, right? Here's the E on top of an A minor. A G minor seven voicing F instead of a full bar chord version where I'm getting the high E string to ring out on all these. Same chords, but you get a different vibe because the melody on top is changing. So you're kind of perceiving how that sounds. So I think it's a really cool thing to do to just take an open chord and then just start, just throw down. Just like how I love to throw down those purpley, pretty little princess licks. We'll call these the pretty, pretty princess licks. Anything in the key of that. <laughs> and then another thing is you don't always have to play them together, right? One cool thing to think about is maybe making licks with these. And a lot of times, you know, usually licks, you don't always just stay on the same fret. You might want to spice it up a little bit, which again is the topic of this whole video, just bringing that spice, bringing that thunder, right? So let's focus in on just the third fret and the fifth fret and maybe find some cool stuff that we could do. Anything with like, like uh, going backwards, little alternate picking exercises which I've talked about in some of the more shred lessons I think sounds really cool like I'm just going five three on the E string then ending on the B string and then going one note forward three E five B three B and then ending on like an F right So there, I'm just taking an A minor. And then I'm sliding into that target zone. You know, you might even, some people could see this as like a BB box or something. There's a lot of different names for it, but this is just one different way to see these that, again, I have been using a lot since I started doing the whole three notes per th string thing that has been in like a ton of videos that I've been doing in the last month, right? So my advice would be to find a chord, again, A minor, and then connect it with this spot. And then get good at moving it, right? Maybe instead of going from five to three, remember, we go one, three, five, six. Maybe we can connect it with this box here. And again, those boxes, if you want to look at it as a box, just because I think that is a cool way to think about it as like something with just like four corners, right? connected with the chord, right? So any other chord, maybe like uh, A minor to D minor. We'll do this A minor, and then we'll do this D minor, like here, right? And then for A minor's spot, stuff is just made just by grooving around thinking of these spots and then kind of just riffing around in between them they're perfect for sliding in and out of each other uh and again if you do want to add that minor major third more power to you right uh i really think that like going through chord voicings is a great way to do it for instance let's take 
uh, three double stops, right? So remember, we have one, three, five, six, eight, ten. Let's go to that uh, five, six, eight. And break this in to five, six, eight, five, six, eight. Right? Just like that, because we can go from an A minor. And all I'm doing is I'm just messing around with like a target area that is like super easy to memorize. Like that. If you want to make it different, if you want to go six, five, three. You know, maybe for the G minor. Again, it's all about just seeing different chord voicings and then trying to connect them on different parts of the guitar and thinking of it differently. And then you have all these different kind of methodologies of thinking. Maybe you started out just doing like the F major scale, right? And if you did it in three notes of string, you'd already see this three, five, six, three, five, six, because we started off like this, right? go back through thinking of different modes, you can think of different chord scales, F major, G minor, A minor, C major, B flat, D minor, E diminished, back to F, or you can think of these as kind of connective points that you can kind of always jump in and out of, and all the stuff is movable. Again, I cannot stress, I cannot stress enough how important it is to be able to just think of this one pattern. Here's your root note. Pretend you're in the key of G, the people's key. The third fret is where we start. The whole step, the whole step. Okay? Please, just do me a favor and just memorize that for your own good. Because it's not about me. If it were about me, you would click the affiliate link for this incredible guitar that goes to Sweetwater.com. Look at that rosewood back inside studio. Ah, oh, binding, amazing, great size. Fits so good on your leg. Thank you, Sweetwater. Thank you, Gibson Acoustics, for sending this over. But it's not about me. It's about you. So definitely memorize those. See what you can do. And then uh, let me know what you think. And if you have any questions in the comment section, Instagram, Twitter, the website, Patreon, I'll talk to you guys soon. Thanks a lot.